O C O nos. No, get it? Because it's like O O no O C O. Mm. North Korea sketched out plans on a napkin, and now they think they can launch in a month. And STS may finally be ready to go. That, as well as our main topic of the space shuttle program and its retirement, on this February 27th edition of Space Vidcast Live, as my father would say, holy sh! This episode of Space Vidcast is sponsored by The Space Store at www.thespacestore.com. Welcome to the Space Vidcast live episode for... For some reason, I expect you to say The Space Store. Welcome to the Space Store <laughs> live show. What's wrong with me? Actually, no, we should, before we get started, we should thank The Space Store for advertising and sponsoring this particular Space Vidcast show. Mm -hmm. They're helping keep us, uh, keep the dream alive, as it were. Yep. Helping us educate the masses and get people excited about space travel again. Because, you know what? You're going to be able to go to space in your lifetime. Actually, you're going to be able to go to space within the next five years. I'm not talking about going to NASA. I'm not talking about doing it through some government agency. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about being able to buy a real ticket on a real rocket and fly into space and experience zero G and see, see the planet from above. And we are excited about that, and we're here to educate the masses and let them know that Everything's changing. The entire space industry, everything you think you know about it, it's all fundamentally changing. And 2010 will be a, a huge year for space travel. And this year is the foundation year to make all of that happen. Yes. It's like building a house, that foundation. We are the Space Vidcasters. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me is a beautiful, lovely, wonderful, talented, incredibly, I already said wonderful. I always try to find one at the end there that's new. I know. And I never can. Nope. Carrie Ann Higginbotham, <laughs> and uh, we've got an action-packed adventure sewed for you today. And should we get started with a little bit of that spacey newsy newsy? I think we should. Okay, here we go. Here's some space news. Space news. <laughs> oh, see your news. Seriously? Yeah, no, we're doing that twice in the show. I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. He was like, OCO knows! And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> really? So OCO, yes. which was a satellite that NASA was launching to study the, uh, uh, what was it, uh, oceans or ca the carbon implant or uh, implant? <laughs> the carbon footprint, something, something. Sure. What Close enough. It? Uh, it, um, it was on a rocket from Orbital Sciences, and the rocket went up. And then it came back down. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, if you see the, the long version, because there is like the edited version that yep. NASA has, like the five minute recap thing. Um, the long one is sort of like, and we're going, and we're going, and it's, you know, plus such and such, mm -hmm. and blah, 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 blah. And it's. I know they uh, kind of, <laughs> like They don't even know what to say. The public, <laughs> the public affairs <laughs> offers, like, hmm. <laughs> Like this isn't right. Right. It was kind of sad. It was sort of like, I mean, it didn't explode, but it, it still kind of had like that same sort of like, uh, 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 kind yeah, of thing to it. For anyone who wants more information on OCO, November Cat in the Scary. chat room, put the, uh, put the link. It's oco.jpl.nasa.gov. Yes. And basically what happened is the launch vehicle from Orbital Science, uh, it went up and there's a fairing that kind of covers the nose of the vehicle. It, 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 the satellite goes in there and it's supposed to kind of break away and then the satellite launches away from the vehicle. That fairing is very, very heavy. There's quite mm -hmm. a bit of weight because it needs to protect the payload, which is this multi-million dollar satellite. Well, it didn't break away. And so what ended up happening is it went up. The engines went correctly. It didn't yeah, explode it, or anything. Right, right. That, yeah, that's why they were so confused because they were like, uh, there's an anomaly. It's always it an anomaly. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, though, I mean, it, it didn't explode. It, it wasn't apparent what had happened right at first, which was kind of the issue, I think. So it didn't separate. And the weight of that basically pulled the vehicle. Well, obviously, at that point, the satellite can't launch because it's going to, you know, it's going to try to launch. It's going to slam right into the inside, still inside the rocket at that point. Well, yeah. the vehicle, not the rocket part. And uh, so it fell back down to down to earth. Now, one, the first reports I heard thought they they said it thought it fell in Antarctica, and that doesn't make any sense to me. 
But now I think that <laughs> it well, moved it, really fast. Well, well, even so, I mean, well, how would it even get there? That doesn't. I mean, I realize the Earth is rotated, but that would be yeah, no, that, that would be impressive because usually try to launch near the equator. But so. it hit waters. I, I believe it hit like the Pacific waters or something right. like that. So that that vehicle or that satellite is lost. Hence the OC. Oh no! And there's I don't know why, but there's always something fun about. When things don't quite well, it, no lives were lost. It was kind of, you know, it was kind of. Yeah, and it's fun to see that they're human. The unfortunate thing, though, is, you know, in order for NASA to try and save money and, of course, you know, save lives, because which is why we had had all of the different um, hold, hold, holds hold, on hold, hold, hold. STS 119, 125, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they're using cheaper rockets, and the unfortunate thing is that they're using cheaper rockets. <laughs> As in, they're not as advanced, they're not as stable, they're not as... They're not as time-tested, but at the same time, th this is kind of the future of space travel. The orbital rockets and the SpaceX rockets, in my humble opinion, are going to blow away the rockets that the governments are building because they're going to be able to do more, faster, better, cheaper right. over time. But you're right, today they're just not tested vehicles. They, right. they haven't gone up. So mm -hmm. I think the good news out of this is that we were able to launch some some private companies, space vehicles. You know, right. uh, uh, rocket. The bad news is it didn't quite work right. Right. But you know, at least we're moving forward. At Oopsie least we're, at least we're making that effort to come. You know, do cheaper travel, and this will actually translate into the uh, space shuttle part uh, at the back end of the show. Right. Because these rockets and these private companies are starting to do what the space shuttle was in originally intended to do, but never able to execute on. Right. Right. So OC O knows. Uh, North Korea has sketched on a napkin their plans for their <laughs> space program, and now I seem to think, I, I say that jokingly, uh, but they seem to think that they're going to be launching a rocket in one month? Yeah, okay, this, this is the deal. Hmm. What happened was that North Korea, little Mr. Kim Jong-il, came on the scene and was like, hey, by the way, just to let you know, in case you're curious, we're going to send a satellite up in about mm, a month. And everyone else said, what the, are, what? What do you, what do you mean? And so now, keep in mind that we are in a relatively advanced state of technology, and we've got quite a few satellites that take pictures of the Earth and everything on it in great detail. They may or may not be spy satellites. Whatever. Saying... But the point is that people have been going over and over and over these pictures and saying, well, that's neat, but... Where we start seeing like a lot of activity is where you said that your nuclear stuff was. So either you're building your space program on top of your nuclear bomb site. It was a power plant, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But still, it's like not to mention that. Keep in mind, the last time that uh, North Korea did anything like this was about ten years ago, and we still don't even have complete confirmations that it all went. We have a picture of the rocket. We got a picture of the satellite, and that's all we got. So, now, what North North Korea seems to think that they have up their sleeve, I don't know, but it's it's kind of freaking out a lot of people. What you know, it, what? we think that there a lot of places think like this ESA specifically thinks that the North Korea is hiding behind their space agency, which doesn't even have a name, doesn't have a website, doesn't have a flag, doesn't have it's, a, anything. It's on a napkin. I'm just saying they there are it. space agency. We're going to launch a satellite. Just look at the directions on the napkin. That's I'm, I'm serious. I mean, it's a little, it's a little creepy. It's a little creepy. So that's one of those things we'll continue to follow is North Korea's space program because according to them, we should see a launch in the next month. And if that's the case, and we're able to get our hands on the footage, we will cover that live as we do as many events as we can. Uh, yes. Yeah. No, you, absolutely. You know, uh, I'm all for uh, pushing. Well, I'm I'm a, kind of a big fan of Space Race 2.0. Quite frankly. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I am. I like competition, and I like the idea that. It's <laughs> Thank you, Owen. Exactly. Okay. Little creepy equals Kim Jong Il. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and as Gooey said, Iran now North Korea. You know, I mean, these are the stories that are coming out. Well, I mean, it's not just Iran and North Korea. I think it's like China fake EVA. Iran maybe launched something, and I, then North Korea. What the hell are they doing? It's, it's all a little. It's Space Race 2.0 is what it is, and it's exciting in its scariness. I, I, yeah. Yes. Yes. I, you know, reason number 3,492, why I'm not having children. <laughs> and STS-119, or as I called it in the open, STS, which stands for space, for anyone wondering. It is still an STS, it, though, well, isn't it? Because we don't have a TLA today. STS, <laughs> if you didn't know, span, stands for Space Transportation System. And that's the name that goes to all of our space shuttle Which actually missions. somebody recently asked me, and I said, 
uh, space taxi something? S space. <laughs> And he was like, yeah, okay, good enough. And I was like, that's essentially what it is. Come on. Space transporting system. Spa it's a space taxi something. I mean, that's... Why? Shut up. It, and we're done. Whatever. Come on. Don't even start with me. You know darn well. You are the one who knows stuff, and I'm the one who needs to be educated. All so right. don't freak out like that. So our space taxi system... Right. Uh, STS-119 uh, is has been delayed. It was actually, in the last show... It's, it's been a little bit humorous because for the last like three or four weeks... It, we We're get, like, hey, STS 119's coming ne this next week. week. This week. <laughs> it's always in the calendar. You see STS 119 <laughs> this week. And then the next week you see STS 119 definitely this week. And then the next week is STS 119. No, seriously, this week. And then they just went indefinite hold. And so we went, oh. Yeah, we got a, a net of March something something. Uh, no earlier than March something something something. But at least we have a no earlier than date. They're replacing, there are some faulty flow control valves. Right. My understanding is they we're trying to decide what they're going to do with that. Are they going to replace it? Are they going to launch as is? This all stemmed from the last space shuttle mission, which was STS-126. And I realize that's a higher number than the one going on now. Mm -hmm. They do that to mess with your head. And uh, <laughs> they do. Seriously? How do they, you track this? You know it's, what? It's you STS know they don't. You know that they don't. You're just saying that because it sounds funny, but you know that they don't. So don't even start with me. I actually had this conversation with my brother the other day. The r numbers go in the way that the uh, missions are assigned. And then, such as, case in point, STS-125, the whole reason 125 didn't go up before 126 is because STS-125 very specifically had the mission of going to Hubble, making some upgrades, little tweaks for the very last time. Good Hubble. Bye Hubble. That kind of thing. Then Hubble got a head. And Hubble went, Ugh! And half of it went down. <laughs> and so that's what happened. And they said, well, that's just stupid. Why do some upgrades on this thing when it's, you know, incapacitated essentially and so therefore 126 went up first and that's that's the way it goes that's right, just so what happens so the order will be 126 119 125 127 come on it messes with your head a little bit anyhow point is sts 119 which is a new mission to the international space station it's going to be adding a bunch of fun of solar things and it's expanding. yeah it should be the final uh the final addition to the iss is my understanding so, so then it'll be done and somebody else can buy it well yeah you know brilliant new property uh, what, 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 I heard 110 I, billion dollars. I actually heard that Russia's looking into it. Really? Yep, to buy the whole shebang. That'd be interesting. And then it won't be the ISS; it'll be the U USSRSS. It'll, it'll be mere two. <laughs> mere two. I, I had not heard so, that. That would, yeah, be, that that would was, be interesting. Actually, that's not necessarily a bad idea because then we can focus on our constellation program. That's and what I have think. To deal with with that. That's what I think. Thing. USSR GUI. I was just kidding. All right. So anyhow. We did not put STS-119 back in the calendar because I'm not doing that. I won't do that to you again. I'm not doing that to you again. But, but that, yes, we will let you know. If you want to know when it's launching, we keep spacevidcast.com slash calendar up to date. So as soon as I, a rocket launch moves or shifts, because these things happen. As right? much weather, as possible. You know, weather, technical faults. I mean, this is, this is complex stuff. It's really cool complex stuff. And as such, the date kind of goes meep, meep, meep. Actually, usually it goes meep. Meep, 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 whoop, 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 what was it? What are the uh, uh huh, uh huh? What yip, are those? Yip, 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 yips. Uh -huh. <laughs> yip, yips. Rockets. <laughs> All right. When we come back, we're going to be talking about, oddly enough, the space shuttle program because it is retiring in 2010. Or is it? <laughs> or is it tomorrow? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome to the Crow River Coffee Company in Watertown, Minnesota. Situated on the bank of the beautiful Crow River, we offer espresso drinks, delicious food, live music, bulk beans, and artisan items. You can see us at crowrivercoffee.com. Thanks!
past. Applaud the present. Celebrate the future. TheSpaceStore.com Honoring the past, celebrating the present, and inspiring the future. So once again, we'd like to thank the fine folks at uh, thespacestore.com for sponsoring this week's show and making it all happen. They're the they're the ones who make bring something something. Well, they, 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 they bring they help bring the show to you. No, come on. <laughs> they this, inspire they, us. They, they, insp they inspire our future. There you Absolutely. go. So uh, as we were talking uh, in pre-show, if you if you weren't watching live, uh, we purchase a lot of the the things for our Twitter trivias, mm -hmm. in fact, I think most, if not all of them. Just about all of them, uh, yeah. From the spacestore.com because they just yeah. have an incredible selection, especially if you're looking for anything NASA related. I mean, they've got anything, yes. you, patches, they've got, uh, they've got pieces uh, all of All kinds of clothing, yeah, all the meteorite rocks that we got all came from there. Um, they've got food, they've got stuff for teachers. There's an entire educational section. So if you're a teacher or, you know, you're looking for something kind of unique for your kids kind of thing, even like your own personal kids, They've got that kind of stuff, books, videos, memorabilia, stuff that's been signed, uh, stuff that's flown with with uh, the different, yep. uh, anything and everything you could possibly think of, really. It's all there. Room decorations, party decorations, uh, even like Mars mud and stupid little things like that. They've got... They've got it all. It's it's really impressive. Their shipping is great. You know, we, we order it and it comes very quickly to our to our home. And we yeah, order quite a bit of stuff. We yes. Get, we get at least one shipment, if not more than one per week. They're so. a really small company. So uh, usually if you get things into them, I think it's by 11 p.m. UTC, uh, the, it'll ship out that day. And you'll usually get it within about five to six days. Uh, and, you know, if you ever have an issue, you call up, you talk to Kelly, I think it is. <laughs> great girl, has always helped me out. And, uh, no, I, they're great. I, I love them. So our main topic today is the Space Shuttle, and it's retiring in 2010. Mm -hmm. So the Space Shuttle is retiring in 2010. Or tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Uh, <laughs> the, the issue here is, I don't know if you saw Obama's... Uh, presidential address. Well, I know you I did. did. Because you were watching it. With <laughs> we me. don't know if you did. We don't know if you saw it. <laughs> but if you saw it, he, he made it pretty clear that we're going to have to make, we're going to have to cut a lot of programs and we're going to have to make a lot of hard decisions on good programs to cut. Right. And I just kept thinking to myself, they're going to, they're going to cut space. Yeah. They're going to, he said in his presidential campaign, the first thing he did was wanted to wipe out a couple billion from NASA. Yep. Then he 180'd on that and said he wanted to give more to NASA. Now I think we're going to 180 again, so it's a full 360. It's really um, unfortunate. Back to, I don't know. Now, no one said anything, but I, I have a nagging suspicion that due to the current economic, well, gl the global economic crisis we're in, yeah. uh, we're going to start taking money away from NASA in the in the billions. And What's going? What's that going to do to the space shuttle program? Now it's due to retire in 2010, but I think that may actually, oddly enough, extend the space shuttle, not have it end sooner. Because what will happen is Constellation, the replacement for the space shuttle, yeah. is costing billions and billions and billions of dollars. Right. Well, if we don't have the money to build Constellation, to build Ares One, build Ares Five, build Orion, then we're we're going to have we're going to have to fly something to the International Space Station. You know, we've got Space Race 2.0 heating up. We've got Iran, North Korea, China, India, Mexico starting a space program. So what's going to happen? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that. I, I am very hesitant. As soon as I heard about 119 and why it was delayed, because, you know, that one delay, two delays, whatever, that's kind of normal uh, to be expected, et cetera, et cetera. But um, because of the, the, the rings, I keep calling them the O-rings, and that's not what it is. The but flow, the flow valves. The thank valves. you. Yeah, because of the issues with that, and um, and they weren't really sure exactly what it was, and 
you know, exactly what the root cause of it was. I, one of the press conferences, I forget who it was that said it, but they were like, look, if we you know, can't figure out what the root cause of the issue is, we can tweak all we want, but we don't know if we're helping, if we're hurting, or, right. you know, all that other fun stuff. So I, 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 that really scares me. That scares me quite a bit. And in my mind, the way I look at it is either they find the problem and they fix it and everything's good, right? Or they think they find the problem, they think they fix it, and then, you know, shuttle goes up, goes boom, that's the end of the program. Now, now Kat just wrote and said there was a $360 million bill that was just passed by the House. Um, I actually, uh, I haven't confirmed that, but even, even $360 million, we're, we're talking billions of dollars. That's what NASA's, uh, NASA's budget's around $20 billion. I think last year was actually $18 billion. Right. And then with the two, there was a, supposed to be an additional $2 billion that brings them up to around twenty. Right. And, uh, you know, $360 million, I don't want to say that's not a lot of money, because, you know, I'll take it. But, yeah. um, well, uh, space vidcast. If you want to really, put it really into really space, <laughs> we can help you do that. Yeah, yeah, oh, we'd be giving away tickets on Virgin Galactic. <laughs> that would be the Twitter trivia prize. We'd be like, oh, a ticket on Virgin Galactic. You want oh, to? Here you go. That's uh, bad. But, no, uh, the point is, you know, $360 billion, a million is a lot, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, not a, it's not even a billion dollars. Yeah. So I'm not sure how much that's going to help. Um, you know, and as uh, Kat also says, OCO was like two hundred. What was it? Two hundred and some odd million. I think it was two hundred and eighty. Yes, two hundred and eighty. I think was I heard. So that's pretty much enough for one single satellite, is what that is. That's. No. That's not even the rocket. That's just the satellite. No, I mean, I, when you think about it that way, that's really kind of pathetic. Sort of. Now, I'm an advocate for shutting down the space shuttles. Yes. I think that they are 30-year-old technology. Yes. I uh, They scare me. Yes. <laughs> I know that uh, uh, Orbital Vehicle 104, which is, do it, come on, you can do it. Endeavor, Discovery, Atlantis. Well, yeah, know. you have to get it eventually. There's only three I can name. <laughs> it was the last one you named. Yay! Orbital Vehicle 104, <laughs> Space Shuttle Atlantis. Oh, come on, how am I supposed to know that? Uh, you know, information through osmosis. Like it like seeps off of me into you. There's too much information coming off of you. <laughs> There's something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the space shuttle Atlantis is pretty much due. It's it's f overflying at this point. Mm -hmm. It's there are parts on it that they a don't make anymore. The company that made them is out of business, mm -hmm. and b have they have already flown it more than it was originally intended to. Right. Then they extended it. And then they extended it again. Right. So there are, I mean, there's the potential of Atlantis just kind of blowing up on the pad. Now, of course, I should forewarn you, I'm getting this information from Wikipedia. So this particular bit of information may or may not be true. So get, well, well, come on. I mean, it, it, anyone could have entered it in. But, <laughs> but it could be true. It could be true. Uh, you know, suppose. A lot of what they said actually did make sense. And right. get, you know, check out the Wikipedia article on Space Shuttle Atlantis, and it actually talks about uh, you know, some of the problems they've got with that particular or orbital vehicle. Mm -hmm. and unfortunately, Atlantis is my favorite space shuttle. Mm -hmm. But, you know, whatever. So anyway, the point is, the space shuttles are aging. They, it's time for them to be retired. This is 30-year-old technology. We need to move on to the next big thing. Now, I, while I think we should retire the space shuttle, I think Constellation is a horrible, horrible idea. Mm. But it's what we got, so we need to move forward with it. We need to get back to the moon, and we need to go on to Mars, in my humble but accurate opinion. Mm -hmm. And we need a vehicle to do that. I was hoping that NASA would reinvent itself, like they did with the space shuttle, right. like they did with, in the Apollo era. You know, they phased out Apollo, they reinvented themselves, they, they threw a Skylab up there, mm -hmm. and they reinvented themselves again, did the space shuttle, and then the space shuttle's retiring, so now they're like, back to Apollo! You know, and they, they'll tell you we do, we're using... We talked about this last week. I There's know. a bunch of different things that they have learned since then, and they've done a lot of different improvements. Right. But point is, I, whatever. It is what it is. And there are debates in... in no, action. I know what your problem is. Well, I have, which one? I know. I know exactly what your issue is. All right, what's my issue? You want your USS Enterprise. I want... Yeah, where's my warp speed? <laughs> Engage. <laughs> That's what your issue is. I know that's what your problem is. I mean, come on, we've got we've got these privatized. Companies. You want your Romulan warbirds? You that want would be your awesome? Eh? Come on, that would be eh? awesome. Good. Yeah. yeah, you want your Death Star? That's you know what? Star now you now you're just mixing sci-fi, and that's not okay. That's not okay. You want your Serenity? That works. <laughs> uh, my Firefly. All right. Yeah. So the die eye capital. So the, one of the. The big, I totally lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. You know that happened? I'm Boom. sorry. Yes. Derailed. Uh, no, no, I, you know, I, 
for me, I would have liked to see the space shuttle um, do something, or excuse me, the replacement for the space shuttle do something more along the lines of what privatized companies are doing. Mm -hmm. Virgin Galactic is doing some pretty cool stuff. Mm -hmm. SpaceX is doing some pretty cool mm -hmm. stuff, although they're doing it with rockets. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's even debates going on inside of our own uh, uh, spacefeedcast.com in these episodes that says, you know what? I'm not even sure Ares 1 is ever going to launch. I mean, why, why are we even building Ares 1? And we talked about this. That's scary. I, you know, I haven't, been, um, I haven't been up on as many comments as you, so I apologize for that, you guys. Um, but I, I, we record NASA TV 24-7, right? And so then I go through everything and try and grab all the new different videos and all stuff like that. All 10 minutes of new content every day. You know, yeah. It's a thankless job, all right? <laughs> Let's put it that way. Thank you, Carrie Ann. Yeah, okay. But my, the point is, though, that uh, there's a new video even that just came out in the last couple of days that another part of the Aries uh, has come in and it's been checked over. It actually looks really kind of nice. Um, they're completely done now with all the lightning rods that they wanted to do. They wanted to put some... Um, uh, shock absorbers on the pads, I yep. believe, is one of the things that they're mm -hmm. looking to do. Um, but and the nice thing is, though, I think is really kind of a brilliant idea. Of course, it's NASA. Hopefully, there's somebody smart who works there. Once they get all the different parts of the Ares ship, rocket, is rocket. that what it is? Okay. They put it, they complete it with, like, dummy parts, parts that they don't have yet. Mm -hmm. So to see, like, how it all lines up and, mm -hmm. and all of that other fun stuff. And it's looking kind of Cool. Now, I think there's like a solid rocket booster. I think that just arrived recently, um, and one of the the rocket shell things that just. Okay. Okay. Anyway, but I think it's re I I think it's looking really good. I'm I'm actually getting more and more excited about it each time another one of these videos well, comes I'm out. Well, I'm excited for the the idea that we're going back to the moon and building a permanent lunar colony. Mm -hmm. That I think is something we should have done 10, 15, 20 years ago. Oh well, yeah. And I'm I'm extremely excited for that. And I guess I don't care what vehicle we use to get there. I wish we would have innovated a little bit more instead of taking the safe route. Mm -hmm. But I also understand that, you know, they kind of need to take the safe route. You know, if they have a giant disaster, especially in a global economic crisis, they're going to have a lot of people who go, um, what's the point? Why are we continuing to fund NASA? I mean, we, I'm sure they're getting that right now. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm excited for that. But the question is, and what keeps being brought up in the chat room, and, and this is for you guys, and definitely leave your, leave your comments on spacefigcast.com, leave your opinions here. Is Ares ever actually going to fly? Is Ares 1, is even Ares 1-X, going to leave the ground? There, the, I mean, there are those. I think it will. I know. I don't I, have any I, answers. I, 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 well, no. I, there, I don't even have no, a... I mean, there are no answers. I hardly and, have know, an November opinion. November Cat thinks it will. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll let some of the, the space big casters kind of do, you know, Gooey thinks it will. Mike thinks it will. I think it will as well, but there are some compelling arguments. Uh, is it... Uh, I think it's Richard? Ooh, Kai I does. don't remember. Uh, Kai thinks it will. I um, think it's Robert. I think it it's Robert, Robert you're talking it Ro about. It's Robert or Richard. I'll see if I can look it up. You uh, keep talking. They, they have some very compelling arguments saying, you know what, I just don't think this thing's ever going to launch. I just don't think. And even, even more compelling arguments saying, you know what, even if it does launch, why do we have Ares 1 at all? Why not just use a Delta IV heavy lifter? It's already built. It's already proven technology. Why do we need the Ares 1? What's the Ares? In fact, the Delta IV heavy, the Delta IV heavy actually will lift more into space than the Ares 1 will. Not the Ares 5, mind you, but, you know. What are you looking up? I was looking to see if it was Robert. Was it well, there's, Robert? There's Rob. Is that the current? So we're just going to yeah. take an awkward pause for Rick. a Rick. It's either Rick or Robert. Oh, it's Rick. Okay, it's Rick. It's Rick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Robert. But it's Rick. I'm sorry, Rick, too. So, but, but Rick has brought up some great points. Yeah, no, I, and like I've said before, Rick and Robert and uh, there's another guy, Ryan, I think, are uh, a lot of the people who keep making really, really long comments. Kai has actually done a couple as well. And uh, we do read all of them. I, like I said before, I'm not exactly up on as many as I should be. Uh, but we do read all of them, and, and they're terribly interesting. Even if you don't have a comment to add to the conversation, Definitely really read. go back and read what everyone has written. Um, it, it's... We have some very, very smart people who are making some comments, you know, and we, we, we really I do. appreciate it. I appreciate it because, you know, like we said before, I, I don't necessarily know all of the stuff that's going on, and these guys are, like, right in the thick of it. It's awesome. Well, you know, and neither do I. I'm a space, space enthusiast. Mm -hmm. I don't work for NASA or Virgin or any private company or anything else like this. I do this because it's something that I passionately believe in, right. and it's something that I think uh, everyone needs to know about. I think everyone needs to take a huge interest in space travel because in my humble and slightly cheesy opinion, 
Uh, this is the future of humanity, and this is something that can unite the planet. It's something that could split the planet, but it is definitely, uh, we are explorers. And I think we should explore our oceans, we should explore our own Earth, and we should explore the vastness of space. We should get ourselves onto alien bodies that we've never put ourselves on before, and we should learn everything there is to know about the universe. We should never stop trying to explore, and I think space travel is one of those things that really gets me excited, and I'm very passionate about it. And I don't care if NASA does it, I don't care if private try I want them all to do it. Mm -hmm. I want to go to space myself. I think every, every single person on the face of the planet should have the opportunity to go to space I think that uh, this is uh, amazing, remarkable stuff, and I am extreme. As much as I beat up on NASA, and it's easy, easy to beat up on NASA. <laughs> well, it is. It's, it's easy. Not that they make it easy. It's no, no, easy no, no, because no. they're the twenty billion pound gorilla. They're the big guy, right? And it's always easy to pick on the big guy. It's easy to pick on Microsoft. It's easy to pick on NASA. But it's hard to do this stuff. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day. They put a man on the moon. Mm -hmm. They put several men on the moon. They're mm -hmm. going back to the moon. They're the only ones who have a viable plan to do that today. Right. They're probably going on to Mars. They have a mostly viable plan to do that today. <laughs> We're getting that, right? La, la, la. <laughs> meet, meet the moon first. <laughs> moon first. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then we've got the private companies. We've got the Virgin Galactics allowing mere mortals like you and me to go into space, experience space. Now, that's only suborbital flight, but baby steps. I can see low Earth orbit. We've got um, the guy who put the space labs in space, the private. It will come to me after the show. Awesome. We've got some really exciting things going on. Mm -hmm. And it is, and this is all happening right here, right now. In the last two years, everything in space travel has been starting to shift and change. And we are building up to some momentous time, a huge shift in how space is going to happen. And um, I, I just. I, I, I realize I'm on my soapbox right now. I know. I'm wondering if I should just go sit down somewhere. You no, know, I can get you a chair. But okay. I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's why I'm excited about this. And that's why I think we need to stop the space shuttle. I think it is time to shut the program down. A lot of really hardworking people have worked on it. It has been a great program. But it's time to forge forward and pave the way for the next generation of vehicles, for us getting back to the moon. You know what? The International Space Station is great. It is an incredible floating laboratory. Sell it to Russia. Write that thing off, you know, great real estate, wonderful views. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, and now can seat six. 5,000 square feet, <laughs> two, two bedroom, two bath, I think it is. No, is it, it's, is it? it's, no, it's been upgraded now. You yeah. can have Well, it used to be one bath, now it's two bath. Oh, yeah, two bath. Yeah, well, three bath if you include the escape pod. Comes with a free escape pod. <laughs> it may not be free, actually. <laughs> So anyhow, that's, that's our show. I'd love to know what you guys think. What do you think the future of NASA's Constellation program is going to be, and will it impact the Space Shuttle program? Are we going to shut down the Space Shuttle in 2010 as anticipated? We haven't even launched STS-119 or 125 yet. Yeah. I mean, those, have been, those are supposed to launch long ago. I mean, our, our Space Shuttle schedule is starting to back up. I'm just really excited for all of these things to start coming together, get rid of the Space Shuttle, and I want to know what all of you guys think. Do you think that we should shut down the space shuttle in 2010 as anticipated, or should we forge forward, or, or should we forge forward with the space shuttle program and let it extend to 2015, keep it running and try to concurrently run Constellation and the space shuttle? And do you even think that Constellation is going to get off the ground? I, what do you, I mean, I, so there are some who don't. And, and what is the argument for why you don't think it's going to happen? What's, what's going on with all that? So definitely leave your comments at www.spacevidcast.com right after you buy something from the space store. And before we go, a couple of cool, really, fit, really cool little things about Space Vidcast. First, if you uh, can find it this week, so this is what the week of uh, February like 16th. It until, actually came out last week. Okay. So for the week of February 16th to March 1st, 2009, go to the, go to your local grocery store or bookstore if they have it. Grocery store. And pick up a copy of TV Guide. Mm -hmm. Turn to page 35. Yep. And you will see Crow River Coffee Company. Yes. As well as Space Vidcast. Bibbing, mentioned as the future of television. On the same page as Gary V. Yes, well, Gary Vaynerchuk yep, from Gary Wine v. Library TV. If you guys aren't familiar with him, please make yourself familiar with him. Uh, he's an amazing guy. So the Thunder Show. As far as I'm concerned, it's a it's an honor just to be mentioned in the same same article, really. So that was us in traditional media, and then there's yep. the other article that just came out today. 
question? Um, yeah, I think it's the latest issue. It's the winter issue of Space Fellow, no, Space Lifestyle Magazine, which you can find at spacelifestylemagazine.com. They don't actually uh, do print. They, mm -hmm. it's, it's all online. Um, mm -hmm. And on that one, I think we're on page 30, if I remember correctly. It's all about the Northrop Grumman Lunar Lander Challenge, which we did back in October of mm -hmm. 2008. And uh, that one actually has a picture of us setting up like one of those. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a total candid shot, but you know, you guys are used to that, so don't even worry about that. Um, Kat is asking what's on the cover of the TV Guide. The TV Guide that we are in on the cover is Andy Samberg, who, if you're not familiar with him, he's from Saturday Night Live. He kind of has a goofy look on his face, like this. And uh, he's got a Swami hat on. He's got a crystal ball that actually kind of looks like the Earth with all the atmosphere and stuff, which yep. is really cool. Mm -hmm. And we happen to be on the page where he's in an astronaut outfit. Mm -hmm. It just happened to work out that way, so which after, I thought was very cool. After you go pick up your moon rock and your Mars rock from the spacestore.com, yes. head on over to your bookstore and hit, get a, pick up a TV guide and check that out. And also go over to spacelifestylemagazine.com and mm -hmm. check us out there. Actually, a good little, good little online resource. It comes out quarterly, and you can... Read up on that. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching us live right here every Friday night at 2 o'clock a.m. Coordinated Universal Time for those in the United States for the next couple of weeks at least. That is, <laughs> well, it is yes. 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific Time, 8 o'clock p.m. Central Time, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time on Thursdays. Now right. keep in mind, everyone, we do Coordinated Universal Time because we're a space show. We're a worldwide internet live show. So we don't choose a particular time zone. We go by a standard atomic time, which is coordinated universal time. Mm -hmm. Atomic time does not honor daylight savings time. And mm -mm. in two weeks, some parts of the world will kick into daylight savings time, which yep. means in two weeks, the time for our show may change for you. But only in your area. Maybe. It depends <laughs> on whether your area honors daylight savings yes. time or not. Some areas do, some areas do not. So definitely remember that. We'll remind you next week. But if you do honor daylight savings time, we will be one hour later than we were this week. Correct. Kind of like when we first started the show, version 2.0 show, we were about... Three hours Three later. Hours yeah, later. Yeah, kind of like that. <laughs> but different. We'd like to thank everyone for watching. <laughs> Definitely comment on the videos. We'd love to hear what you think. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, and, uh, you know, get passionate and excited about space travel. And, you know, just let everyone you know know about space travel, that they can go into space and why it's such a big deal. And if you don't know why it's a big deal, then ask us. We'll tell you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week.